In this video, I want to take a look at setting up uh, a very basic Flask environment and getting a very basic Flask server up and running. So to start this process, I'm going to start in GitHub and I'm going to create a new repository. And I'm just going to call mine Flask Test for now. And I'll go ahead and initialize it. And I'll need the URL. Next thing I'm going to go into my command prompt. And I'm going to clone this down. I want to clone it onto my desktop, so I need to get onto my desktop. And then I want to get into that folder that was just created from cloning it down. And if I look inside of that folder, I can see the readme file. Okay, so it's basically what I expected. The next thing I need to do is set up a virtual environment. And to make sure that I have Python installed, I'll do python dash dash version. And I'm looking for anything greater than 3. So ideally, you're on the latest version. Uh, as of this video, it's 3.7.4. But we'll take anything greater than 3.5. Uh, what we're doing isn't too particular. Next, I want to create that virtual environment. So VENV, this first one argument right here, this is the name of the virtual environment. And then this is the folder where you can find it. And this basically says the dot means from here. So from flask underscore test forward slash folder VENV. And after I activate it, after I click it, uh, then it takes a minute or two for it to install. And now we have it installed. Let's just make sure we see the folder. And we do. We see a VENV folder there. We see it over here. Now I want to activate that virtual environment. So to activate it on Windows, it's dot backslash the folder VENV. Inside of that VENV is a scripts folder, and inside of that is the activate command. And I can now see that my virtual environment named VENV, and this name is this part of the argument. Uh, has been activated. This is the folder where this where the virtual environment can be found and it relates to this argument. So I'm in the virtual environment now. If I do a pip list, remember pip is the package manager for Python that we're using. There's only two things installed. So pip is a good, pretty good package manager and it will install the application I want plus all of its dependencies. Well, I want to install Flask. So pip will install Flask and it will install all of its dependencies as well. And when I'm done, uh, there's pip and setup tools that we saw before. And there's Flask that I wanted installed, version 1.1.1. But this version relies on Click, It's Dangerous, Jinja 2, Markup Safe, and WorkZoog, maybe. Uh, so it also installed all of those packages. Now, I want all of these packages and their very specific version numbers. I want to capture that so that if someone else were to uh, clone my, my project down from my repository, they would have everything they need. Or if I push this up to a server, it'll have all of the, the packages and the versions that it needs to, to collect as well. So the way I'm going to do this is through a command called pip freeze. And basically, that's take a snapshot of all the installed packages and their versions. Greater than sign. Requirements.txt. So take a snapshot of all of, of everything we have installed in this virtual environment. Redirect that to, that's the greater than sign, requirements.txt. So instead of showing it on the screen, put it in a file. 
Okay, and now I can see requirements.txt. So I'm going to open my project now, and I'm uh, an editor. I'm using Atom. I'm going to open up the project folder flask test, right? The project directory. And inside of there, I can see the readme file that comes down from GitHub. I can see requirements.txt that I just created. I can see the virtual environment that I just created. And this .git. So .git is everything about this directory. So when I do a git in it to initialize git, or when I clone something down, I get this .git file. So dot means it's hidden, so you can't see it. And notice there's no file extension after it. It's just .git. Now inside of here uh, are all kinds of things about keeping track of where the head is at, which directory we're on, all of the uh, commits and things like that. This is essentially how Git repositories work. Everything happens inside of this. If I no longer wanted to track this with a Git repository, I would delete this file and I no longer have um, uh, Git. I no longer have Git installed or Git tracking that directory. I don't want to do that. I want to track it, so I'm going to leave that alone. Next thing I want to do is create a file called gitignore. So I'm going to create a new file and it's going to be called dot git ignore. Again, it's got the dot in front of it, means it's a hidden file and there's no file extension after it. It's just dot git ignore. It looks like this. Now git ignore, the purpose of this file is to tell git what to ignore. So I, there's a certain, few certain things that I definitely don't want Git tracking. And the first one is going to be the virtual environment. That's going to be somewhat specific to my machine. Uh, it's going to be uh, large. Um, and I just there's no need. It, it will just get recreated when someone clones this down. They'll create their own virtual environment, and then they'll be off, off and running in that environment. So don't track mine. A couple other things that I don't want to track. Under Flask, I don't want to get track the instance folder or anything in there. That's going to be where I put things like uh, the database usernames and passwords to make connections and things like that. I don't want those things tracked in, um, in GitHub. Also, PyCache. When I build uh, the Python project, it's going to create a bunch of byte compiled code and it's going to put it in PyCache. Um, and again, it's large, it's redundant, it just gets created each time. Uh, I have no need to, to track that. Uh, a couple other things here uh, that we're not going to track, web assets cache, uh, and a couple of the Python files here. Um, this is largely kind of a best practice thing. On our projects, we're specifically interested in VENV, instance, and PyCache. So let's save that. Now I'm got the I've got the structure in place. It's time to add a, a Python file. So let's create a new file, and I'm going to call it app.py. And app.py is going to look like a Python file. So I'm going to do an import here. So from the Flask module, I want to import the Flask class. And the flask, uh, this underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, um, this is a variable uh, that in our case is going to basically be the same thing as main. It's going gonna, it's gonna to act like main. I'm giving that a reference variable of app. And then that particular app, I'm giving it a route forward slash. So we'll talk about routes here in, in a couple of minutes, and I'll create a second one so that you can understand them better. Uh, but this is how we're capturing our different web pages. So we're not, we're no longer linking into subfolders and files. We're linking to routes. Then this route, in this route, we're going to create a function, and our function is called index. And then this is what the function does. And then this, uh, this is always the last line of code. So if the name is equal to main, which in our case it is, then it's going to run the app. App and it's going to run it into bug mode. So this should work. Let's see what happens. If I come out uh, to my console, I can run Flask by typing Flask 
run. And I see the server is started and it's running on port 5000. That's what this colon 5000 means. So let's open a browser. There we go. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Now, just to show you this route a little bit, if I were to grab this code and copy, paste it down underneath. I don't know why I'm getting these errors. We'll deal with them later. Uh, I'm going to make the route forward slash mic. So this looks like a subfolder, uh, but it's actually a route. I have to have a different function name. I have to fix those errors. And now when I save this all up, I have two routes. I have the, the index route or the, the basic route, like if you're just going to the website. And then I have the forward slash mic. And there's returning two different uh, print statements in here, or two different strings, I guess. So after I've made changes to app.py, I need to cancel the server. Uh, and I do that by pressing, by pressing control C. And then I need, we're going to restart it. So it's picked up the new app.py uh, edits with the new route in there. So now when I visit, when I go to just the website, I'm getting the index one. But if I go to the route forward slash Mike, I get the code that's under that route. Things are working like I want them to. Uh, so let me stop the server. And it's, let's push this up to GitHub. Uh, so let's uh, get status. And I have some untracked files. So that uh, tracks them and stages them. Uh, and I think it doesn't like my single quotes. There we go. And I now have two commits. Uh, and the second commit only has requirements, app, and dot get ignore. Uh, and then the readme file was from the, the first commit. But it's not tracking PyCache. It's not tracking uh, VENV. And later when we have instance, we would see that it's also not tracking instance. So when you have this functionality down, then you're ready for the next video where we're going to not just return a string, but actually return an HTML file and start using templates.